Gunners Collective, back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, like a mother, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. like a mother, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. like a mother, back at it. Bye, 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 guard. Are you ready? I know I am. Now, you guys see the thumbnail right there, and I'm in a little style of direct fashion. It says, My biggest familia secret. The biggest, see everyone, every family has a different secret. They have a deep, dark secret. So okay, maybe they're, maybe they're Omel Hotar. I don't know. You know what I mean? Whatever, to what degree of secret they have. Um, but everybody has a deep, dark one, you know? And I know I had a lot of homeboys, you know, I'd go to their pads and things just didn't seem right. I'd be like, damn, man, eh? you know what I mean? You guys got a nice car, but you got more roaches than a little bit. It's, it's pretty bad in here. I know, that's my secret. You remember, remember we're on the school bus and the roaches came out? Yeah, I remember that. You know what I mean? You said it was that that, that fat black kid that sat next to you. I know, but that was my secret. That's a family secret, right? Those are our primos. Now, trip out. Um, Everybody has one, right? I went to one homeboy's house, um, and this homeboy I always thought was a Mexicano. Couldn't tell him. Thought he was Mexican. You know what I mean? He's from the barrio. He's a Norteño. Um, never question it, never, nothing. I mean, just look straight like a Mexican. I remember I walked to his house one day and, hey, is the homeboy here? His jefita, you know, she was like, yeah, yeah, come in, mijo, it's all good. She even called me mijo. I was like, okay, cool. I walked in there and I smelled curry. I said, what, what's happening in here, right? Are you making some special dish you've seen off YouTube? And no, guess what it was? They were uh, uh, a whole different ethnicity. They were, it, I mean, it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter at the end of the day, a homie's a homie, but they were like uh like from India or something. And I was like, Sadio? I never knew. Homie was like, Yeah, that's my secret. Hey? I said, Well, why are you keep it a secret? Be proud, homes. You're still brown, you're just like a, a an olive shade of brown. It's it's different, you know what I mean? And you have better hair. Um, anyways, so trip out. Um, everyone has secrets, right? Well, I'm here to tell you my story and mine's. You know, um growing up, you know, as a youngster. All I seen around me was Norte, from the tagging and spray painting, to the way Vatos carry themselves, to the old school OGs that used to get out of the pinta, dun, 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 with the music just bumping behind them, all tatted down, veteranos sitting on the stoop, just nodding out. I mean, I seen it all. Anything that you could think of seeing in a bottle, that's what I seen, but I seen it in a northern fashion. Now, I know a lot of people like to think that north and south is very different and no, nah, homie, we do it differently, or you do it differently, or we do it violently, or we do it silently, or whatever the case may be. It's all the same, homes. A barrio is a barrio. You're, it's going to smell like papas and chorizo in the morning. It's going to smell like nopales in the backyard. There's going to be homeboys politicking in the backyard. There's going to be scanty smoking there. You know, it's just going to be a barrio. It's what it is. You know, there's going to be that one homeboy riding a beach cruiser. No, not Debo, I say. You know, the homeboy looking for a demo. It's just what it is. So... Um, you know, I grew up in a northern fashion, meaning looking around and everything was north, the red pineals, well got birds. Um, it's just the way it was. Okay, so and I loved it. I liked that. That's all I knew. You know, I didn't know about the soul really. I knew that the only thing I was told was that they were the enemies, they didn't like me, they hated me. So I had to defend myself against them. Not to hate them, but to defend myself against them, to take up arms against uh, uh, an enemy that wanted to eradicate my people. That's how I was laced. That's how I was going to rock. And I did for many, many years. Um, so in the beginning, I developed a hatred towards the Baltas from down south, the Raza from down south. And it wasn't a hatred like, yeah, I'm going to get every single one I see. But it was a hatred as, man, why do you hate my people so much? And when I don't even know you, right? But little did I know this was just propaganda that was fed to me by certain individuals, man, to instill a hatred that really wasn't there so that way I could do their bidding. Okay, and I know that now as an older bottle, I understand that the situational differences of things, but I didn't have then. It was, brother, I didn't understand why we didn't like you guys either. You know what I mean? Now I know. Take a shot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Water shot of coffee, right? It's all good, my brothers. Um, but at that time, I didn't 
uh, understand anything other than get off where I was mad at. So I started to develop a hatred. Now I had primos of familia that were South Siders, right? And there was a common understanding there. You know, when we're together, you know, sangre is more than, than agua, right? Blood's thicker than water. So when we're around each other, it was all love. You know, my primos, hey, I got nothing but love for you, baby. I got nothing but love for you, baby, right? But don't act stupid because I'll shoot you, allegedly, right? And that's how that was. And that's how they felt with me. And there was, there was, you know, a line, an imaginary line drawn there, you know, um, as to what you could talk about, what you couldn't talk about at certain family's house. But um, it was all love. You know, it never really came to that. Only a couple of times. Say, okay, and I won. Bang, bang. Right? And that's just it. So, um, over time, I started to develop that hatred. And then, of course, I told you, you know, I got incarcerated as a young, at a young age. I went down south. You know, I got bad, anything from battery pack to stab to hit with boards to, to uh, you know, I know what rocks in the mouth feel like. Um, you know, I just, I just... I was getting jumped on every day. I had to defend myself to the fullest and to the utmost. And I think I did a good job, you know, the best I could. Um, but that's what it was. You know, that was part of Gerra. That was part of how a brown person was living in them, in them t days and ages. You know, it's different now. It's way different. Now they just pull up and pop. Back then it was pull up and drop. You feel me? Um, but now it changed. So um, as I got a little bit older, I started to have an understanding of the reasons why I was doing the things I was doing, the reasons why they were doing the things they were doing and what it all entailed, you know, what it was all really about, you know, the circumstances of it. Um, and still I was going to rock with my people. You know, you don't just stop. You don't just stop hating or stop loving or stop anything. A real one just keeps doing it real for really real. You know, even if you know it's wrong, even if you know it ain't the right thing to do, you're already committed. All in. Damn. You got today's. Right? It's just bad. Um, you, you've already pot, you're pot committed. You're already in. Um, so when I got out of prison or got out of YA, I was already known around town to be one of the, one of the homeboys that put the North at first. One of the homeboys that put the gangs and all them issues way before everything else. It's, it's what it was. And that's a fact. You know, I hated to see homeboys inner fighting. I hated the red on red. I hated um, to see any establishment of any gangs outside of our area coming in. Um, I was one of those ones like, nah, homes, it's us first and foremost and nothing else. You know, I knew what canalismo was all about. I knew, you know, I would go um, travel to a lot of homeboys, you know, go to Antioch, go to Frisco, go mess with the homeboys in Oakland, Newark, Songho, Richmond. And the reason why I did is because I developed these relationships in the youth authority being incarcerated with these cats that I understood the plight of a lot of different barrios and I was welcome to go to San Jose, Story and King Cruz with the homeboys from Hoods or Palmas, right? This is what I used to do. Um, you know, so when I got out, I was doing a world tour. So I was like, Prince, I would die for you, right? I was doing the world tour. I was making sure that I was over there chilling with all the homeboys and I was developing all kinds of different clecha from different gangs and different barrios because everybody's different, homes. We may like all nopales and huevos in the morning. Some of you guys like huevos, you know what I mean? But the difference is, um, you know, we're all from a different spot or a different, we got a different swag, a different swang to what we, what we sang, you know, how we bring, but it's pretty much the same. But anyway, so I'm going to get indoctrinated by all the different homeboys and they're telling me the stories and we're having, I'm having a good time and I'm embraced because I'm a Northern, I'm active. At that time, we didn't use the word active. We didn't use that. You're a homie, you're a homie. If you're not, you're not. It's straight up, period. You know, um, it's changed over time to now certain words mean certain things and people trip off one word and. Um, I don't know. You know what I mean? The only thing I was active back then was uh, the stuff for Jerry Curls. Activator? That was it. So anyways, we're out there. The, mo the mobilization is real. And um, let's get to my secret, you know what I mean? Because I'm babbling. So I ended up meeting a chick, you know, right when I got out of YA. I met a chick and she was from Atwater. Now, Atwater traditionally is right next to Merced, but it's infused with the Southern uh, Raza. Um, it's been a Sureño stronghold for many years, right? And, um, you know, I never tripped. One, one rule I had was I'd get any hyena that I was going to be with or I was going to, I was going to bone on wasn't going to be from the town because I didn't, if I hadn't hit all of them already, um, more than likely, um, you know, they were with the homeboy. It was just, it was drama. It was problems. And it was the same with tiradas, just going in circles, you know, from the north side to the west side to the east side, 140 and then back, you know, nah, I was cool with all that. You know, I like to bounce rocks game, but that's not, there's, there's only so much you can do. You know what I mean? 340, mm -mm, you don't know me. So I'm gone. So I like to trip out on hyenas that were from the surrounding area, maybe the county, Livingston, Fresno area, Modesto, um, Atwater, right? 
um, I tried to stay away from the town because you know, I already, I already knew how that went blue. Indubitably. So anyways, I'm, I'm knocked this chick from Atwater and she's my first baby mama and we end up having a kid. Um, now, like I said, Atwater's traditionally a south side of town. So her family's mostly from a town right there. Um, and it was, I paid it no, never mind. Like I said, we had our own apartment on Determine. Um, we lived in Atwater, Winton, Livingston. We lived in a few different little spots. Um, at that time, I was still active in North Daniel, so I, I wasn't even thinking about inactivity or nothing like that. I was thinking about my old lady and the kid that was on the way. Okay, so eventually we moved back to Merced. We have a child. And um, it doesn't work out between me and, and my chick. You know, it doesn't work out. Like I said, I told the story she had a sister that just every time wanted to go out and wanted to kick it and wanted to do this, wanted to do that. And she, her sister applied pressure and pressure and pressure. Eventually, she won out. And she decided that for no other reason, she wasn't ready to be a mom. She wasn't ready to raise a kid, right? Well, get on now. And I say, eh. you know what I mean? But you got to understand at that time, I wasn't quite ready yet either. Was it that I was a bad father? I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I know how to change a diaper, I, allegedly, right? But um, I just was still in the mix. I was still gangbanging. I was still out there. I just got out. I haven't really had a taste of freedom like I should. Um, you know, but when you got to take on responsibilities, when you do what you do, you know, that was good. You know, but that was good. When that was great, or it was good, it wasn't great, it was good, um, and a kid comes, you know, you have to step up to your responsibilities. So, basically, she did take my kid, and, you know, I paid my child support, uh, you know, I see my kid on the weekends, and, and things like that. That's how it worked out. We co-parented back then. Um, you got to understand, during this whole time, my daughter grew up in Atwater, you know, and I was supposed to be a hardcore Norteño at that time. I mean, everybody knew what it was. You know, I was always flamed up. I was always north of this, north of that. Every time I got incarcerated, I was with the homies. I was functioning burpees, you know, in juntas, all that, right? I was, I was doing my thing like you're supposed to if you, you know, you're part of that, that life. Anyways, so she, um, my daughter gets a little older. And I remember I was living in Livingston and I was with another chick, you know, and this chick's, uh, you know, pretty hardcore, pretty much about the north as well. And we're chilling, we're in bed when I get a phone call from my jefita. And she calls me, she's like, hey, mijo, did your baby's mom call you? And I said, no, I was happening. And she said, if something's going on with your daughter, you might want to call her. I said, well, well, hold on now. Let me see what's going on here. Hey, Piruan, what's happening with my kid? She's like, hey, I'm tired. I'm done. It's your turn. She's 13 now. I'm out of here. See you later. Hasta la bye-bye. I'm going with my boyfriend. I met in LA. He's from 18th. Hey, you don't even understand. I love him. All right, man. Where's my kid at? I'm going to go pick her up, right? Boom. Go to pick my kid up, and then as soon as I get my daughter, my daughter got a little attitude now at this time. It's my oldest, right? She got a little attitude, and her mom's like, she's kicked out of school. She's messing around. She's on the streets messing with the, uh, her friends. They don't want to go to school. You know, lightweight ditching and doing their little thing. They're teenagers. Um, and it's time for me to save my kid before she goes that route. Um, and I'm willing to do that. You know, I'm a strict father. One thing I am is a strict father. You know, I'm, you know, you know my kids ain't calling me by my first name. They ain't doing none of that. It's I'm dad, and it's a father, and I'm sir. And I'm, and I'm God and that's it. Right. So, um, I'm like, what's up? You act the badge? No, dad, I already know. Right. Now get in the car and say, come in and live with me. So boom, we work all that out. She comes uh, to live with me. And I'm like, so what, to what degree of score are you kicked out of? Right. Now this is the big secret. We're about to get to it. Ben's up. Thank you for holding on like invoke. Um, she's like, Oh dad, you know, I get in fights and stuff. I say, hey, did you win? You know what I mean? Because like, yeah, I used to get in fights too. You know, I didn't win them all, but, you know, I won my fair share. She was like, yeah, I'll be beating up girls. I'll be like, oh, hell no, and guys. I'm like, oh, hell yes. Right? Chill out. What's up? That's my kid. Um, I said, okay, you're going to go to Valley High because you, you're not going to just sit around the house all day while I'm working. You're going to go to Valley High. She's like, dad, I can't go to that school. This is where I find out my deep, dark secret, right? She's like, dad, I, I can't go to that school. I said, no, you're going to go to that school. You know, I don't give a fuck. You're going to that school. You know what I mean? I got to do things. I got to wiggle. I can't be worried about you. So she's like, nah, really, Dad, I can't. And she looks like not frightened, but her look in her eyes like, be serious. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. You got kicked out of regular school. You got to go to school. And Valley High is a continuation of school. It's for the mess ups. For the people that mess up, they just can't be in regular school. You know what I'm talking about. Half you guys went to it, right? Or been to something similar in your town. So anyways, I drop her off. Sign her up, drop her off. There she is. It's your problem now. You know, I'll pick her up later. Ride the bus if you can. You know what I mean? Hitchhike. Anyways, boom. So I get home. About 12 o'clock, I'm at work, and I get a phone call. Hey, from the office, you need to come pick your kid up. She done got into it. She done got in a fight. What? And when I get over there, right, my daughter's in the office. She's sitting there all mad, hair all messed up, right? There's two girls all beat up with black eyes. I'm like, 
what happened? She was like, I don't know. Talk to the principal. I told you I couldn't come to this school. So I went in the principal says it was gang related. I said, gang related? My daughter ain't no gang. Look at her. You know, she's an angel. She's a unicorn, right? She's not gang related. So I take her home. What happened, man? You know, I'm a, I'm a new school parent. So I'm different, right? I'm straight, but I'm different. You know, I'll hear you out and then I'll shut you down. So I'm like, what's that? What happened, man? I ain't, I ain't Bill Huxtable. You know what I mean? I'm Mr. Cosby. And she's like, um, or Cliff Huxtable, right? Bill Cosby. So she says, uh, Dad, I told you I couldn't go to that school. I said, why? What happened? Tell me. She says, well, you're not going to get mad. I said, no, nah, I don't care about none of that. You know what I mean? You did what you had to do. You won, right? What happened? She said, well, when I got in there, they recognized me from being from Atwater. And they were like, this is Norte. And I told them, this is Seoul. And got up and beat them. I said, Hah! wait up. I got to take the gas. Right? I got up. I'm outside pissing. Did I just hear what I thought I heard? God. Why, why thou you shall forsake me, right? Why do you curse me, right? So I get back, shake him off. It takes a long time, he's big, right? Shake him off, get back in the car. Oh, man, we need to have a talk when we get home. Let me get this right. They said, Norte, and you said, so. Why would you say so? She goes, because I'm a Sureni. I said, all right? I said, what'd you say? <laughs> I was mad. I was mad, disappointed, but then I had to think and be a wise man and think, <clears throat> this is what God does. This is the karma I get. For all the times that I was pushing north and all this, this and that, I done wound up with a Renya daughter, right? And that has changed. To this day, she's a mother now, you know, and a good and a good woman. You know, I'm very proud of her. Um, and I, you know, raised her right to my ability, the best I could do. And she did her own thing, and her mother did a great job as well, right? Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, she was Renya. I said, so that goes to show you. Nothing's off limits. A Norteño hardcore out in the street. Boom. See, I was more worried about my barrio and the homeboys and the establishing. Meanwhile, my daughter was growing up to be a Sureña. The one thing I despised and I hated and I was told to hate and I was told to go against and I was bred to be against. I'd have made one myself. They're born every day, right? That's what I'm trying to tell people. Um, when they say, oh, no, we're different, we're different. How? That was my own daughter I made. Like, they might be fine. They say, I made that, right? She came out of me, and she was a Sureña. And was that for several years? You know, I tried to, I didn't, I'm not going to sit in there and say, I tried to talk her out of it. I was like, Mia, you don't understand, you're from Northern California. She was like, I know, but this is Sur on mine. I said, yeah, but, but, but you ain't never even been to the Sur. Because according to uh, what your mom said, you ain't been past Fresno, right? She goes, I don't care about none of that, Dad. This is how I rock, and this is what it's going to be like, and it, that's what it was. Now, eventually, she ended up getting with the Norteño and having a couple kids and can't get to what degree of Sureñoism she has going on anymore. I don't know, um, but I wish her the best. But um, at the end of the day, you know, that's what it is. That was my deep, dark secret. I remember homeboys used to be like, yeah, hey, mom. They bring their little sons, and their sons are all from the barrio now, you know, and their daughters, you know, all tiradas. Like, you know what I mean? From the barrios now and stuff. Hey, my daughter was a Sureño. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like... They're like, hey, the man, the hardcore, the Mr. Crazy North, they're every, oh, above all else. And the author's a daughter, daughter came soon. You know what I mean? It'd be like that. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that that story was a little bit in alignment, a little bit of education for the parents that are out there, man. Pay attention to your kids. See, I didn't pay attention like I should have. That's the moral to the whole story. Um, not the gang stuff. I didn't pay attention like I should have. I was too busy worried about the homies, too worried about the gang, worried about what I had going on and how I was looking in the body of, no, do this, and I'm that, and I'm this, and I'm that. And meanwhile, my kid was growing up doing her own thing, and I wasn't paying attention. Now, however she grew up and what she claims, that's neither here nor there. Man, we're all the same at the end of the day. It was more so that I wasn't um, particularly there when I should have been in certain situations to maybe detour her from being from a gang. Anyways, nobody wants to see their kid Grow up like that. You know, it's all fine and dandy. All these active cats. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. But their kids are, but I don't want my kid to be with it. Why not, homie? You're mad at me because I'm not. But what about your kid? Oh, God, that's my kid. I'm different. Oh, yes, I know. Bang, bang. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move forward with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the struggle, the strife for one's familia. You know, I'm not a perfect man. There's not a lot of perfect people out there. I don't think any of us are. But let's do the best we can. And by doing the best we can is get up off your lazy ass and go out there and get it for and hustle for your people. Don't hustle no one out of their bread. Hustle for your bread. So that's get fun to say. Fun. Plus a little thought. I never heard nobody. If you like this, hit that like and subscribe with a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. If he's going to be the head that wears this crown. I'm going to continue to struggle and strive for what I honestly, really, honestly, truly believe in. And that's the coming together of all people. I totally believe that we're all the same. Um, I know at one point in time in my life, I pushed a very different linea, a hard line. Let's say, you know what I mean? No, I don't have a soft shoe chrono. 
But I'm going to tell you at the same time, Gar and white man. I'm going to do what I does because I'm brown. Bang, bang. Respects to everybody. The gun.